Okay, here we're going to be looking at the sophisticated equity method. And what we're going to be concentrating on here is the subsidiary's income that the parent would record here. And we're going to be looking at the sophisticated equity method versus the simple equity method. Since most be, might be uh, familiar with the simple equity method here, we're going to make this comparison. So let's look at our trial balance here for the parent corporation and the subsidiary corporation. So uh, for the, the parent's uh, portion here of the subsidiary's income here based it on the simple equity method. All we take is our sales and then we have some cost of goods sold, some expenses here, and then we get a net amount here of $150,000 in this case. So for our trial balance here using the simple equity method, uh, in this case the parent had an 80% ownership, so all we do is take 80% uh, here of the net uh, or the earnings here, or the uh, income here for the subsidiary corporation of $150,000. And there we would record here the uh, parent's portion at $120,000. And just continuing on here with the uh, simple equity method here, uh, the uh, subsidiaries uh, income distribution schedule here, they had internally generated $150,000. And then we made an adjustment here. We had some unrealized profit here uh, of $16,000. So we adjusted it down here to $134,000. And then uh, the subsidiary get 20% of that here for $26,800. And then moving over here to the parents' income distribution schedule. They had an internally generated amount here of $200,000. And then the corporation are there the subsidiaries amount they're going to re this is where they're going to record or calculate the sub their portion of the subsidiaries amount and then again they just take 80 percent here of the adjusted balance of $134,000 so they have a controlling interest here of $307,000 so uh, the point I want to make here is that with the simple equity method here we just take whatever percent here off the uh, trial balance that the um, earnings that the subsidiary makes here and we take the uh, parents portion off th this percentage here and we're going to be looking at here with using the uh, uh, sophisticated equity method we don't go through it in this fashion we have to first uh, calculate here the uh, uh, the uh, income distribution from off the uh, income distribution schedule so moving over here looking at the sophisticated equity method. Corporation P, the parent has to prepare a subsidiary income distribution schedule first before it can record its share of the subsidiary's income. Instead of recording the sub's net income here at $120,000, they have to record this amount that they calculate here at $107,000. $200. And let's go down and look at it here. So we have uh, internally generated net income here from the subsidiary, $150,000. And then we have this adjustment again here of $134,000. So we have a controlling share here. And this is the point we have to make here. The uh, parent is going to get 80% here of this adjusted net income, just as they did with the uh, simple equity method. And they were getting a controlling interest here of $107,200. But the point we have to make here is going back to our worksheet here. Uh, when we use this uh, sophisticated equity method, we first have to prepare this income distribution schedule. And what we calculated off here was $107,200. And that's what we're going to be eliminating here. This is what we're going to use on our uh, trial balance here. And this is the income that we're going to be eliminated uh, using the sophisticated equity method, this $107,200. Now with the simple equity method, we, we're going to we'll be working off the $120,000. But with the sophisticated equity method, we first had to determine the uh, income distribution here for the parent from the subsidiary. And with the simple equity method, you see we had calculated the same income here from the subsidiary for the parent, but we did it later. We were, we were doing this later after we had first, later after this, um, all this other adjustments here, the adjustment here uh, for the subsidiary income here for the simple equity method, all we did is take a percentage here of the uh, uh, subsidiary's income without any adjustments. There weren't any adjustments in here, but with the uh, sophisticated equity method, we made uh, adjustments here to the subsidiary's income before we recorded it. 
All right, continuing on here, using the sophisticated equity method, uh, we first had to calculate the income distribution that the parent would be receiving here based on the in income distribution schedule here from the subsidiary. And that is what we would re-record it here as a subsidiary income. And because we uh, recorded this subsidiary income here using the sophisticated equity amount here, it does affect other uh, amounts here on our adjustments that we were making for these intercompany transactions and for in this case for the first year here we had an investment here in the subsidiary by the parent and that was affected here by the subsidiary income where we took the uh, uh, beginning balance here for the investment in the subsidiary by the parent and then we added the sophisticated equity income for the year here to get the uh, new investment here in the subsidiary. Okay, using the sophisticated equity method here, and uh, we just went over the first year here where we had a consolidation between the parent and the subsidiary using the uh, sophisticated equity method. But in future years here, we uh, when we make our consolidations, we have a, a complications here because it's complicated because of an inconsistency between the parent's accounts and the subsidiary accounts. But the first thing that we always have to do here is we have to uh, use the uh, income distribution schedule here from the subsidiary to calculate the parent share of the income. And just going through, say, a, a second year here example, where we had internally generated income here from the subsidiary of 120000 and then we had a, a realized profit, and then an unrealized profit here, and then we came up with an adjusted net income here. And again, we go through this same procedure here where the, the a parent or the controlling interest here, the parent would get 80% of it in this case. So we have a controlling interest here of uh, income of $99,200 for this second year here. So moving over to our uh, worksheet here and looking at our trial balances here between the parent and the subsidiary. Again, we carry over this sophisticated equity income amount here that we calculate of $99,200. And using the simple equity method we would have had ninety six thousand dollars here and that was just a net amount here between the sales and our cost of goods sold uh, we had a hundred twenty thousand and then the subsidiary or the parent would get eighty percent here of the subsidiary's income for ninety six thousand dollars now uh, the simple equity method here didn't include any of the uh, adjustments that had to be made for the year for it. So it doesn't matter if you get profits or losses here on those adjustments, but uh, the adjustments uh, using the sophisticated equity method here would be included here in the subsidiary's income, whereas with the simple equity method uh, there weren't any adjustments included. It was just based off the uh, balance sheet here from the uh, subsidiary, the sales, and then their expenses here, and then the par uh, parent only received a percentage of those here without any adjustments, whereas the sophisticated equity method made the adjustments. But uh, we've got a whole bunch of other corrections and adjustments that have to be made using this uh, sophisticated income that was um, we calculated here versus the uh, income here using the simple equity method. And those are complicated here because there's an inconsistency between the parents' accounts and the subsidiaries' accounts.